Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and I am here today with a project for Not Too Shabby. I'm going to be showing you how I use their Bouquet of Happiness stamp set to create six quick and easy mini slimline cards. I hope you'll stick around and see how I'm going to make them. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. A couple weeks ago while my mom was visiting, she introduced me to another YouTuber who had this great concept for quick and easy stamping to make them into card sets. I will have that channel name up on screen now and linked in that description box below. I will also link the couple videos we used to create cards already. Today what I want to do is use that same concept but instead of making A2 cards, I'm going to see if I can make some mini slim lines. In front of me here are the basic supplies that I'm going to get started with. Like I mentioned in the intro, I will be using the Not Too Shabby Bouquet of Happiness stamp set. I plan on using the big floral and some of the sentiments to make my cards. To get started, I got out one piece of craft cardstock, and we're going to be doing some simple stamping on this, and this will actually be turned into six mini slimline card fronts when we're all done. As I do start that process, I will be sure to let you know of other products and tools that I bring in, but for now, let's get crafty! To get started, I'm going to be stamping on my piece of craft paper. I got out my Sizzix stamping pad since I'm using the clear stamps and a piece of grid paper just because I will be stamping off the edges. My stamp is pretty large so I got out this large clear block and I will be stamping with VersaFine Onyx Black. Now to get started, once my stamp is on the block, I'm going to ink it up with the VersaFine and then I'm going to stamp it in the lower left hand corner of the card stock as it is sitting portrait on my work surface. I am going to make sure that the bottom left corner of the stamp is hanging off the bottom left corner of the card stock. Now because this is a pretty detailed stamp, once I have it in place, I do press down and let it sit there for a bit and then I pull it up quickly because I have accidentally dropped it before and I didn't want to do that. After that first image is done, I inked that stamp back up and placed it to the right of the image that I just stamped. I tried to get it in there nice and close so it would look later like it was a single stamp going across each of the bottoms of the card. I finished that first side and then I flipped it around and I did the same thing on the other end. Once both sides were done, I set this to the side so it could dry completely. My next step was to cut some card bases, so I got out six pieces of craft cardstock and I cut these into pieces that were six and a half by six and a quarter. That way later when I fold them down, it will be six and a quarter by three and a quarter folded. I do use quite a bit of craft card stock, so the little pieces that were left over from cutting, I will save those for future projects. I continued cutting each piece of card stock until I had six pieces for my card bases. Next, I brought in two pieces of pink card stock and I cut these until I had six pieces that were two and three quarters inches wide by five and three quarters inches tall. Later, these will be the mats for my stamped pieces. 
to make my card bases, I did go ahead and bring in my score buddy so that I could make a score line and a nice crisp fold. Now because these card bases are super close to a square, make sure when you put them into your score tool that across the top is the six and a half inch measurement. That way when you score on the three and a quarter inch line, you will fold it in half for your final card size of six and a quarter by three and a quarter. It is super easy to mix these up. So once I figured out which was the correct orientation, I placed my pile on the right in that so I could just bring it over and score them. Once each of those were scored, I then folded them in half, once again using the little bone folder to get a nice crisp fold. My stamped piece had had plenty of time to dry, so I brought that in to cut it down to size. The first thing I did was cut it into two pieces that were five and a half inches tall, so right in half, and then I'm gonna cut each of those halves into three pieces that are two and a half inches wide. Now, when you start to cut yours, you can kind of figure out, ooh, is that where I would want that cut to go? You do have a little adjustment room as long as you don't cut it down to seven and a half before. So I cut each half down, so I have six total stamped pieces. Now this next part is completely optional. I did go ahead and bring in a pink colored pencil that I thought would match my pink mats. And what I'm gonna do is some selective coloring or spotlight coloring on the stamped pieces. Here on this first one, I'm going to color that large rose, but nothing else around it. Then for the other cards, sometimes I colored that large rose, or I might have just colored those teeny tiny buds. Now this again, totally optional. You can leave these just as is. You could use other coloring mediums. And if you use colored pencils, you could also use some Gamsol to smooth out the coloring. But honestly, I felt kind of that kind of mottled colored pencil look went well with the craft card base. Here's a look at those final six pieces colored and you'll see how I colored each of them just a little bit differently. Now it's time to get a sentiment put onto these cards. I decided on the I miss you, that's all stamp, and I will actually be dividing that sentiment between the front and the inside of the card. I'm gonna be using the VersaFine Onyx Black once again, and because I just wanna set it up once, I did bring in my Misty. Now here you'll see that normally I like to put my piece of cardstock in the lower right hand corner. But if I do that with this sentiment, you'll see that some of it would be over on that pink frame. So what I did is I moved my piece so the left side is aligned with the four inch mark on the bottom ruler. And then I will place each additional piece right at that same spot as well. I want the I miss you to be on the front of the card, kind of over to the left. So I set my stamp up where I wanted the I miss you to go, and then I made sure it was straight across on the door of my Misty. Once I thought it was, I then brought in some post-it notes, and what I'm gonna do is cover up the part of the stamp that I do not want stamped on the front. So for here, I covered up that's all. I am then going to ink up the stamp with the ink, take off the post-it, and stamp the I miss you comma onto the card front. Since I set the sentiment up with the Misty, all I have to do is repeat the process for the remaining five stamped pieces, each time aligning the left side with the four on the ruler, putting on the post-it note, inking it up, removing the post-it note, and stamping. Now you'll notice that I do kind of move the post-it so it's a clean spot there, and I try to keep my fingers out of that black ink. Once all of the fronts had been stamped, I brought in my card base so I could finish the sentiment on the inside. This process was pretty much the same, but since I'm using the right side of the stamp, or the part that says that's all period, I can go ahead and put my card base in that lower right hand corner of the Misty. I did have to play with it just a little bit, make sure it was centered and straight, but then I did the same thing with the post-it notes, covering up the opposite end, 
inking it up and stamping it on the inside. The misty and post-it notes make this so easy. I continued inking up and stamping until the inside of all six cards had a finished sentiment. It was then time to get these cards put together and finished. I matted each of the stamped pieces with a piece of pink cardstock, and then those two layers got adhered to the front center of each of the card bases. Now off camera to finish these, I did go ahead and add some pink gems to add a little sparkle and bling, and here is a look at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's cards. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above, and if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.